Hey, what's up? And welcome to this episode of EST, the podcast for established church leaders by established church leaders. My name is Josh. My name is Sam. Welcome to the show, everyone. Josh, welcome. this is our third recording of the day. Are you tired of me yet? No, man, I love you. <laughs> I think this is great. <laughs> we've, been, we've been doing this a long time together and, you know, uh, got to gotta mention Micah, God rest his soul. Um, you rest know, in we, peace. Mm-hmm. People do ask every now and then, and we've, we've, Micah has an open invitation to come back. Uh, he's just real busy with his mission work. He, he went he, all yeah. missional on us. He did. Um, somebody asked me the other day, are we ever going to have Micah on the show again? And I was like, we didn't vote him off the island. That was his choice. And so he's <laughs> welcome to come. He can come back anytime he wants. I was texting Micah a little bit earlier this week about that missional stuff. The, the thing he's a part of is actually based real close to where I am now. So he was inviting me over to some area kind of lunch thing. I didn't get to go. But yeah, Micah, Sam, and Josh are all still friends. Micah's just not on the show anymore. It's not a there's no conspiracy or anything. No, and we've got a lot of new listeners uh, since Micah was uh, booted off the show, mm. although he wasn't really booted. Um, <laughs> since he walked uh, so the plank. We, there was a guy named Micah who started with us, and mm. you all need to know about him. Um, mm. Micah Freeze. Yeah. It's Freeze. It looks like fries, but it's Freeze. Um, it's freeze. should follow him on the Twitters. Um, he's, yeah, still, he's a cool guy. He's still posting stuff on Twitters. All right. We've got this great mm-hmm. episode because you and I are both fathers. We're dads, right. and um, mm-hmm. we have children in our home, and what do we tell them about the church? But before we get to that question, I want to thank our sponsor, Church Teams. Church Teams has a church management software solution for you. Um, they do just about everything. If it's like a digital sort of way of doing ministry, I mm-hmm. bet they've got a solution for it. So. They've got applications for membership, check-in, uh, texting, online giving, scheduling, groups, process management, giving. They really do it all. Uh, they've got these best-in-class features at a price you can afford. They do so much, it's very hard to do it in a short promo at the beginning of every one of these podcasts. Uh, but Boyd Pelly leads the team. He does an awesome job with them. They serve churches so well. They, they genuinely love the local church. They want what's best for the local church. This is a partner that you need in the CA, CHMS world, the church management software world. Um, so mm. you can go to est.church, check out the offer that they have there. Um, they've got a free trial that they are uh, allowing for our listeners. And I definitely think you should take them up on it. It's no risk for you. So I mm. and I bet you'll like it. So uh, thank yeah. you, church teams. Uh, go to est.church mm. to get that free offer. Okay. Yeah. Your dad, what do you, what do you, let, let's start with sermons. Do you do anything mm-hmm. with your sermons and your kids? Yeah. Well, let me back up just to explain the topic. You are a pastor. We're pastors and our kids are there and they get to a certain age where they start putting things together. Like they're, they're like, Dad, I see what you do. And what we do has a very public element and there's a private element. They they know when we don't come home on Wednesday night because we have a, a finance team meeting. And they know that we're cranky sometimes and it has something to do with work. And work is people it's their they church. Know, you know, it's their church. So, um, you know, and they may be close to the student minister. And what happens if you're not happy with one of your employees at that point? So we're going to talk about some of these larger pastoral established church topics and how we talk to our kids about them. Um, so, so uh, let's, share, let's share our kids' ages. So mine are yeah, 13, okay. That's good. 13, 11, 8, 7, and then we still have a foster daughter that we're, we're connected with, and she is 5. So okay. Yep. Four, 4 plus 1, we'll just say that. All right. That's awesome. I have 15, 13, 10, all boys. So very much aware. And both. And and both of our families are multi ethnic families, so we that's some true. of our listeners, youngest we don't often mm-hmm. yeah we don't often talk about that but yeah um and you you married a Cuban I did yeah yeah um, thought she was Mexican but yeah it turns out she's Cuban so uh, <laughs> I'll tell you so that. That. <laughs> you know we <laughs> we <laughs> so we <laughs> this is so funny that you bring this up um, because in Texas obviously you do have a lot of Mexicans 
But in Florida, we right. we, yeah. we have a lot of Mexicans. Beautiful in people. fact, our our Spanish speaking pastor, pastor is Mexican. Hey, Jesus, mm. he's awesome. Um, but you know, we uh, we were having these jokes at our staff in our staff meeting. Sometimes we have to have translators too. Um, mm. We were having this joke because we were going to do a combined service, and and the. Mm. The, the Spanish speakers were like, please don't reinforce this. We were going to like do something on Cinco de Mayo. And they're like, please. And, and the Mexicans were like, we don't even celebrate Cinco de Mayo. That's like an American thing. Um, yeah, and they're like, please yeah. don't reinforce all the stereotypes that all, you know, that, that all Hispanics are Mexicans. And we just, we just right, were right, rolling. Right, right. So that it's, it's fun. We just had that conversation as a team. So it's really fun. Well, that you, that you said yeah. That. So Jackie and I have joked before because, you know, just, I'm, I'm a normal dude. Right. And so I grew up just always being attracted to Mexican girls. I just, that's what I like. Brown hair, brown eyes, brown skin. Um, and that's what Jackie is. And so one day I said something to the boys and we were talking about, you know, being attracted to people and sexual things and stuff like that. And, and I said something, I was like, yeah, boys, I mean, I've always been attracted to Mexican, um, girls and Jackie says, um, but I'm not a Mexican. And I said, but I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and if you know Cubans and Mexicans, it's even funnier. Um, oh yeah, of the way yeah, that yeah, yeah. They love they very like very other. different cultures, very different cultures, very different. Yeah, no. And for the record, I knew she was a Cuban when I married her. <laughs> um, okay, so we talk. Um, yeah, so about sermons, I I I use my kids and my wife a lot in illustrations. I don't ever disparage them, but sometimes if I think it, this might embarrass them in front of their friends. I'll give them a heads up. This last Sunday, I was going to tell a story about Leland, my 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 13 year old, and it it happened when he was like five, and he was being totally adorable and cute. Um, but he's right now he's all tall and big and strong and handsome, and so I didn't want to embarrass him in front of his friends, so I just let him know, hey, I'm going to tell a story um, at the end, just heads up. And he's like, yeah, that's fine, it's cool, um, because they're they're used to that. Uh, do you incorporate your kids and and stuff into the sermons? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm human. I'm a dad. I love my family, and mm -hmm. we're a goofy bunch of people. And so, there's lots of great stories about my family, and I mean, lots of great. And my kids are just crazy, and in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like they they just produce good stories because they've got yeah. these big personalities. Um, and I have one daughter who, uh, my oldest daughter, she she's like fine, whatever. You know, she doesn't care. Nothing nothing phases me. And then my <laughs> other daughter's like, please tell all the stories about me, even the embarrassing ones, because I love to be the center of attention. Uh, so um, that's how my you youngest know, is. We um, I'm very careful with that. You know, mm -hmm. I I, yeah. I would never want to uh, disparage my wife or my children or make them feel less than because I said something in a sermon. Uh, but you know, we're we're in ministry together as a family. Mm -hmm. And I kind of know where the, I've, I've do, been doing this long enough and my kids were raised in the church. I mean, goodness, I was a pastor before Aaron and I were even married that we were boyfriend and mm -hmm. girlfriend. So it's, it's kind of like we've been doing this long enough that I know, I know where the lines are and I know where I would upset my children. Um, mm -hmm. I don't always ask for permission because it's just not something we do in our family. Uh, I mm -hmm. just know where those lines are and I'm careful not to cross them. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm in, I'm including stories about my family. I mean, my church loves that. My yeah. church loves my kids. So yeah. when and by the way, my kids tell stories about me because it comes back to me after Sunday school. They're like, <laughs> hey, pastor, guess what? Guess what your daughter said? I'm like, I don't even yeah. want to know. It's not don't, true. Don't she's she's exaggerating. She's so yeah, it cuts yeah. both ways. But we have a very healthy family dynamic, and I know a lot of our listeners mm -hmm. would be like, we, we don't, my church, it's not a healthy dynamic, and I can't really tell stories about my family because they would hold it mm. against me. Um, so mm. I would just say a lot of it depends on your family culture and your church culture, and if it both work, and if it works out where, it, hey, they all match up, then yeah, you should tell stories, but you should also work very hard to protect your family. Um, yeah. And I know some pastors feel like they have to protect the family from the church because it's just a tough church. Yeah, I, and I, I, I mean, I embarrass my kids a lot in my sermons, but it's never because of the stories I tell about them. Um, it's just because it's me and, and the way that I am. I, I will say there's another little dynamic that if you're a parent um, that I would encourage you to do. Public speaking is a thing that a lot of people are afraid of. And so my wife is also an extremely good preacher. And so her and I will regularly kind of let the kids know behind the scenes of how we 
how we prepare our sermons, not just the study of them, but also the homiletics of it. Like, this is what we're thinking through. I, I'll tell them times when I'm nervous. I'll tell them, I'll talk sometimes about like, I didn't feel like I was connecting to the audience. And here's some things that I'm thinking through. What did you think about that? Because I want to normalize the idea of standing in front of people and sharing um, my heart or something that I'm passionate about because they, you know, they, I hope they grow up to do whatever it is that God calls them to do. And if they're an auto mechanic, they're probably not going to have to do much public speaking, but they might be in banking or, or, or a CEO of something. And I want them to feel comfortable with something that I know how to do. And that's something I can share with them that will go into nearly any aspect of their lives. So that's something to think through. You're a public speaker as a parent. And so uh, share some of that thought process with them. Yeah, I think that's wise. Uh, we, me and my children talk often about my sermons just because mm -hmm. our family lives are so intertwined with the church that mm -hmm. um, that they're just normal normal topics that we we talk yeah. about hey you said this in your sermon why what did it mean I didn't understand or that was really funny um, mm -hmm. or hey that point really hit home uh, you, you know or hey dad you should do this you know I mm -hmm. goodness I've actually gotten some ideas for my kids from you yep. know for for sermons uh so it's a we just try to have healthy family discussions about all of church life i try not to overshare about like individual people in the church you know because i don't want to place the burden of counseling on my kids or even my wife for mm -hmm. that matter mm -hmm. um so i try very hard and i don't i don't share confidential stuff um i used to tell aaron like 90 percent of what goes on at the church, that Aaron's my wife, and now I tell her like 10% of what goes on at the church. And our marriage is in a much better place because of that. Uh, okay. I don't know how your spouse is. I don't I don't know. Maybe your spouse would, does want to know more, and then you should tell more. Mm -hmm. But my, mm -hmm. my wife is totally cool with like just not knowing much of anything, and it, it actually mm -hmm. has benefited our marriage. So it's not me keeping things from her. I'll tell her whatever she wants to know. Um, but... Uh, it's it's helped our family to only talk about the things that are a joy to us when it comes mm -hmm. to the church. Okay, so you shifted gears a little bit there. You went from talking about the sermons to essentially talking about like pastoral counseling. We could narrow it down to that scope there. Um, some of the things, and I'm with you, I do not talk to the boys about what, uh, and, and if we were just going to narrow it to, to parenting, Jackie and I have different conversations, but... Um, yeah, I don't talk to the boys about problems that people are going through. Now, I will say my oldest son, now that he's like in teenage world, he puts things together. And sometimes he can put together like another kid in the youth group's parents are dealing with this and their dad is a deacon. And so he knows that there's a dynamic going on with all of that. And he'll ask questions. And so I try to shepherd him through thinking about the topic and not necessarily about that individual's problems. So, you know, he might say something like, um, are so-and-so getting a divorce? And, you know, something like that. And I would say, you know, listen, how did you hear about that? Or what is it that you're hearing that you want me to talk about? And he'll say, I'll say, yeah, well, listen, sometimes that happens amongst parents and there's different, there's different reasons that they feel like that needs to happen. And then we talk about divorce and we talk about loving and how hard that is on kids and like, how you can minister to that kid, right? So so what I would say is, no, I'm not going to tell my kid, hey, you know, your friend's parents are just about to break up. But I will say that, like, divorce is hard on a family. And, you know, we're going to try to love them through these situations if they do come up. But, you know, and there's been times when I say, son, that is not something you and your friends need to talk about. And if it comes up again, you shut it down. All right. Your dad's taking care of that. And you shut that down. So um, and he's done that. He knows that like there are certain things that we're not supposed to be there on. So, yeah, it's, um, that's that's good advice. Um, you can never get around the fact that your whole family is in the fishbowl. Now, some fishbowls yeah. are better than others. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. but the, it, mm -hmm. every church is a fishbowl, every single one. Um, yeah. It's just impossible to get around that. You, you will have more eyeballs on your family as a pastor yeah. than, than any other mm -hmm. family in the church will. With small church, mm -hmm. big church, it doesn't matter. Um, and I, I wish that I could say that there was some sort of ideal scenario where that wasn't the case. 
but it is everywhere. Even in a healthy church, it's the case. So you do have to lead your family a little differently than mm -hmm. a church member would when it comes to church life because mm -hmm. you're the shepherd and yes, things, yeah. things come to you. You're the gatekeeper. You're where a lot of the information is found and your kids know that and they will ask questions. Yeah. And you know, we try, I, I welcome the questions. I'm like you, I, I would never uh, share confidential information. If somebody came to me in a, for counseling or something like that, I, 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 I don't tell Aaron those things. Uh, I don't tell my kids those things. Uh, but what about like church politics? You know, mm. how do you, how do you manage now? We're both in healthy churches. We have not always been in healthy churches. Um, that is true. But, <laughs> but um, what, uh, how do you, man let's say for a listener that's tuning in and like the church is just not in a good place. There's a lot of political maneuvering going on. And mm. how do you protect you, your family's there? Your family can't be a member of another church. That's not healthy either. So they're, they're with you. It's not. How do you manage that unhealthy situation, particularly when there's a lot of politics involved? Yeah. Okay. So like to put some flesh to these bones that you've just brought up here, you know, if there's a lot of fighting going on, you have a church conference or a business meeting, your kids will likely see people be antagonistic towards you. And they don't have to understand all the words to know posture and tone. And they can see that Mr. So-and-so was being mean towards their dad, but they're not sure about the topic that sort of stuff. So I don't think it's devil's advocate, but I really do always, when I'm talking to my kids, I want them to love the church, love Jesus and love the church and to love her the way she is broken and flawed the way she is. So I will say, I try to, again, steer away from talking about the person and talk about um, the topic. So Trying to say, like, if you were to, like, Mr. – I'm trying to think of a name of somebody who has not been antagonistic towards me, so I'm not putting this on a podcast. But let's say, like, a Mr. Paul. Why was Mr. Paul so upset with you? And I'll say something along the lines of, listen, Mr. Paul and some others, not just him, have a value for X, Y, Z. I need to change this, and so we're going to we're going to slightly address his issue in a different way. We've had some conversations with him. He's still upset about, to the best of my knowledge, X, Y, Z. But, you know, Mr. Paul, is he's still a part of our church, and I love him, and I respect him for his opinion and that sort of stuff. It One, I want them to love the church. The other one is there's something healing to me about talking how I want my kids to understand and love the church helps me realign with the way that I view Paul, right? Or the way that I view conflict. So I try to stay in those lines, but I'll be honest with you with my older son. Um, there are times where I'm going, you know, I don't know. Uh, Paul's mad. I've tried to talk to him. I don't know why he's mad. He's still a part of our church. I have a responsibility to love and shepherd him, but right now he's just being mean and I don't know why. And so I have said that now I haven't said that to my youngest son um, ever about anybody, but my oldest son's old enough to know um, that like sometimes people are mean to their dad for who knows why. So um, how about you? Do you do you get into the nitty gritty like, well, they just want to control X, Y, Z or how do you do it? Well, thankfully, um, we're past all of that at West Bradenton. That was years ago. And that was when my kids were smaller. Mm -hmm. so they were not they they, mm -hmm. they they weren't they they weren't old enough to even comprehend that somebody was angry. Um, and they wouldn't yeah. have been at the business meetings to have seen some of the nastiness. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm actually grateful that our kids just are seeing church in a good light. There's still an underbelly here. There's still sin present. There's still church oh, yeah. discipline we have to do, of course. And, and they do see some of that, but it's in a healthy way. It's, it's not in a combative way at all. So um, fortunately for me, I don't have experience here. I, you know, I don't want <laughs> experience in, 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 this, uh, in this world. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I haven't had to do that, but I, I know that some of our listeners have, and I like how you approach it. It's just like, you just be real as, as your kids mm -hmm. get to a certain age, don't hold back. Don't pretend, don't lie. Don't try to, um, you know, you know, put, put a nice little candy coating on it. Just tell them straight. Mm -hmm. And your, yeah. your older children will appreciate that and it will help them, uh, stay 
in the church and mm-hmm. and understand that the church is still good even if it's got mm-hmm. a few warts on it uh, so um well what let do me you ask do? you so go ahead you go, go ahead. ahead i was just gonna say um what about staff um those that causes a lot of stress and conflict with um with pastors and so do you ever talk about staff to your children or do they understand let's say you have a problematic staff that you're gonna have to let go how do you communicate that kind of thing with your children i would i would only communicate it in, in when it gets to that end point where somebody was there now they're not short of that mm-hmm. i do not bring up disciplinary issues staff disciplinary issues we don't have many at west brayton mm-hmm. we've got a good team um, you know, are there frustrations? Yeah. I mean, we're like, you know, our team is kind of like brother, or sister, you know, like there's just gonna be times where you fight. Um, but it's like in a family sort of loving way. It's a brother, sister sort of relationship. Um, but, uh, so I, I, I wouldn't, if, if there was an issue, I would not communicate a personnel issue to my children. I think that's highly inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and you, if you own a business, you shouldn't do that. Uh, if you lead a church, you should not do that. I, I just don't think it's wise to be sharing personnel issues, however you manage them at your church, whether it's a, a personnel team or human resource team or a board of elders, keep that in a very tight circle. You shouldn't share it with anybody else. You shouldn't share it with your kids. Um, but I will tell you something that I do that is highly inappropriate. <laughs> okay. What is that? I hope none of our, <laughs> none of my church members are listening. Yeah, turn oh. it off, Wes Bradenton. Turn it off. I do church member impersonations. Huh. It's, okay. it's a it's a, it's a hit in my house, particularly with my wife. Yes. <laughs> I do church member impersonations. Um, I only do them at home. And uh, I'm not a stand-up comedian. I can't believe comedian. you're confessing this. I can't believe uh, you're just saying this out loud. Yeah, I am. Uh, and but some of them are quite funny, and yes, yeah, yeah. so I do the I do yeah. them for for my family, um, and only mm. for my family, uh, and my mm. children know that I will absolutely ground them for the rest of their life if they reveal my church member impersonation. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I don't do I don't talk to the kids about um, staff issues or personnel issues because, like you said, I like the the brother sister thing. I also try to not use family language with staff because they're employees, more of a team, but your team is not always going to be perfect. And there's times where I can get frustrated because X, Y, Z didn't get done the way I wanted to, but I don't want that to in my kids' minds somehow speak to some sort of character issue. It's not a character issue. It's a performance issue. And and we're going to navigate through that. So I never talk to my kids about current staff. Now, like you said, once it gets to the point where they're going to now go and I need I need to explain to my son why one of his friends is not going to be at church anymore and why they're moving. And in those moments, I say, look, there's a reality out there that you, you have a boss. You need to do what your boss expects of you. You need to be respectful or else you get terminated. And that's true at churches. That's true in the workforce. And I would be a bad dad if I did not teach my children that they need to respect and obey their bosses or they get terminated or, you know, um, forced out or something along those lines. And, you know, I always try to tell my kids the whole story, um, meaning all of the elements. They don't need to know all the details, but we we provided for them. We gave them them, even though they did a bad thing. We still provided them some what we call severance. That's because we want to take care of his family, your friend. Um, I try to tell those elements because as broken as the world is, sometimes they hear a ne- a different story um, at school or they'll hear a different story. And I want them to be prepared um, to speak to that. So, yeah, so that's how we handle our kids with sermons, with church conflict, with personnel. I'm sure there's a bunch of other topics we could get to one day, but that's all the time we have for today. We have to do a follow-up episode at some point on this, because there's definitely several other areas that we could have discussed, but we are up against the time, so thank you for tuning in. And we also want to thank our sponsor, Upward Sports. Upward Sports equips churches to run self-sustaining sports ministries in their communities. You may be a sports fanatic, or you may know very little about sports, but you know that it can be a bridge into your community. Wherever you are on that spectrum... Upward Sports can help you. This is a first-class sports ministry. They are the largest Christian youth sports organization in the world. 
Uh, so they can help any size church do just about any program. They have a variety of programs to pick from. Uh, it's not just mm -hmm. basketball and gymnasiums, although that's certainly popular. Um, I love basketball, so um, but they can do they can do lots of different sports. So you should definitely reach out to them. One, because they can help you do ministry and they can help you do outreach. But two, because they're sure. offering a startup grant for five hundred dollars. You heard that right. Go to upward.org slash church answer. Schedule your call with them. Tell them we sent you and they will grant you five hundred dollars to get this ministry started. They want you doing outreach. They believe in what they do so much so that they are willing to offer to our listeners this $500 sports startup grant. So go to upward.org slash church answers. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope it's a blessing and an encouragement to you and that uh, if you're a parent, you'll be better equipped to talk to your kids about what it is that we all do. Thank you so much for listening and we will check you next week. Upward Sports equips churches to run self-sustaining sports ministries in their communities. Whether you're a sports fanatic or on staff at a church, Upward Sports will give you all the tools you need to run a first-class sports ministry that allows you to reach families in your community. Upward Sports offers basketball, soccer, flag football, cheerleading, volleyball, baseball, and softball through league and camp offerings. At Upward Sports, we want to help your church make a difference and give you increased opportunities to share the gospel. Learn more today at upward.org slash church answers.